Thank you, beloved. Greetings in Jesus' name. Now, you know how I do it, right? Because you're too silent for my liking. This is a celebration. I say this is a celebration, right? Now, you know how I do it. Give me a joy! just penalties for the Pirates fans. But watch it, there's another cup coming, right? But not to waste any time. Um, I want you to just scream one more time the most beautiful name ever given to the face of the earth. I say his name is... Hallelujah, now you may have your seats. I'm born in noise. That is why I like noise. Right. Well, my name is Joan. I'm Joan Hendricks. Um, I'm so happy to be part of this celebratory occasion of our ministry, Crystal Ministries International. Um, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you, to thank all our families, friends, um, visiting pastors uh, that graced us with your presence here today. A special thank you uh, to my mother. Um, her name is also Joan, but they call her Becky. That's my mother. I thank God that she's alive to celebrate this day with me. I would like to also take the opportunity to thank you for our visionary, my husband, the father of this house, Reverend Carl Hendricks, because without him, this was not going to be possible. Amen. Now, this morning, I would love to just dedicate this psalm that I so much like, and I want to um, do the speech on this psalm. It's Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, and it says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Today is a joyous occasion, both to Reverend Carl, directress of this ministry, and the Crystal family. Amen. However, if the truth be told, these past years, while beautiful in many ways, have had their share of disappointments and pain. Can I get an agreement? Both for the church and Reverend Carl, these past years have brought about heartache and betrayal, setbacks and trials. Nevertheless, Reverend Carl, his family, and the Crystal family have weathered the storms and have been found guilty of yet holding on, still looking up. Hallelujah. You could have given up and walked away like many others did. You could have gotten disgusted with God and church politics and lost your faith. But thank God you are holding on and still looking up. Hallelujah. While I want to commend you for your stamina and the persistence, I do not believe that you could have done it on your own, but because of God Almighty. I believe the God behind our text in Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2 provides us with the real reason why we were yet holding on and still looking up. The psalmist knew that prior generations 
had looked to the hills in times of trials and tribulations, and God had made his presence known in the hills. Amen. It was on the hillside that God spoke to Moses through the burning bush. It was on the mountain where God spoke to Abram and stopped the sacrifice of Isaac. It was on the mountain God spoke to Elijah. Now the psalmist say, I will look up to the hills. It is a look of anticipation. It is a look of expectation. So I believe the psalmist knew the God of the mountain will address every need that I might be facing. Now even if I love or even if I my life was beaten down, we have to look to the hills. Amen. Even when we are in the midst of painful realities that have destroyed our hopes and created chaos for our dreams, yet we have to look up. Even when others have given up and thrown in the towel, we ought to look to the hills, expecting God to make a way and pour out his blessing once again. In the midst of downsizing, of workforce reduction, in the midst of messy, unresolved court cases, in the face of layoffs, in the face of unemployment, in the face of BEE and BEEE, you ought to look up to the hills and wait with expectation. Can I get an amen? Then you ask the question, where does my help come from? It is in the question that is arising out of human need of the realization that we are not self-sufficient. Despite our trust in God, it is the question we ask when all resources do not add up to the bowls sitting on the table. It is a question asked when loved ones stand at the bedside of loved ones when doctors gave up hope. It is a question asked when those you've helped once upon a time turn their back on you in times of need. It is a question asked when people scandalize your name and people you've trusted now becomes your enemies. Well, it was the question of Moses at the Red Sea. It was Elijah's question when he was on the Mount Carmel confronting the Baal prophets. It was Gideon's question when he faced an army stronger in number than his army. It was David's question when he was being pursued by his enemies. It is the question of today who have seen their children descend into the hell of drug addiction. It is a question of grieving spouses, mothers, sisters, brothers who has lost a loved one and is trying to adjust to a new and painful reality. And it is the question of a loving reverend uh, this morning uh, who agonizes over a church uh, that refuses to grasp a new vision uh, and cling to the past uh, that has no future. I say it is a question uh, where we ask, where does our help come from? It is not a cry of hopelessness or desperation. It is not a cry of desperate exclamation of one who is about to give up. No, rather it is the faith longing, hopeful anticipation of one who is yet holding on, still looking up. Where does my help come from? It is a plea of one who trusts God, but whose mortality still keeps that trust from being complete. It is the hope tinged with doubt that longs for God to come right now, but knows that God only moves on.
on God's time. And therefore one must be content with yet holding on, still looking up. I'm glad to say that my husband, Carl Hendricks, and this crystal congregation, I am glad that today you say our help comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. We are sure of the source of help we anticipate receiving. The Lord will come and deliver us. The Lord will provide what is needed. I say the Lord will come from Zion and is the source of help that is needed. The Lord of creation is the one who will provide. The Lord of creation who called worlds into being and created all that has been created is the same God who is concerned about our hurts, our pain, our challenges, our disappointments, our frustrations, and the tears we shed night after night. I say the Lord is our source of hope and help. He is the same Lord who put the planets in orbit. He is the same Lord who placed the stars in their place. He is the same Lord who created black holes and galaxies in concern about me. He is the same God who is concerned about you. We know now that Reverend Carl modeled for us this course known that God is the source of his help and the basis of his hope. We now know that Reverend Carl loves his family and the family of Crystal and they, the fam his family were pillars of strength. But he knew through all his trials and tribulations that his help comes from the Lord. Today I want to take the opportunity to thank you, Carl Hendricks, my husband, for your unwavering faith in God. Thank you for committing your life and endure the task that God has placed on you. Thank you for your love toward us, your family and the family of the congregation of Crystal Ministries. We truly salute you. Thank you for not giving up on us but that you yet holding on still looking up to the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. Crystal family, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart that you stood with us through thick and thin, through painful issues, through people that tried to scandalize our name. Thank you for standing up in our absence. Thank you for yet holding on and still looking up to the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, Crystal family, our helps come from the Lord. In the midst of setbacks and disappointments, your help comes from God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for giving whenever we ask you to give. Thank you for putting your mouth, your money where your mouth is. To all those of you that is in crystal, whom we can always knock on your door. Thank you that you never give up on us. Today, I want to say, I salute you for your commitment, your integrity, 
your love and your support to this ministry, Crystal Ministries International. Now, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate Reverend Carl, the directors, and the Crystal family on this beautiful occasion. May God continuously bless us. Amen.